Good morning, church. My father and I have this tradition of sending each other quotes and seeing if we can identify them. Uh, it's uh, We just send them via email and then um, we see if the other one can pick out the quotes. The way to win this game, by the way, is to always pick Winston Churchill because uh, even if he didn't say it, it's some pretty clear someone on the internet will attribute it to him. Famous quotes gravitate towards famous mouths. At any rate, my dad sent me one that I was pretty sure was not Winston Churchill the other day. Uh, it was a quote uh, that turns out to be by a Greek philosopher from the 5th century BC named Xenophanes. And Xenophanes had this quote that says, if, if oxen had gods, their gods would be oxen. And I think what Xenophanes was saying was we tend to project onto to God or gods our own view of what we we want. So we we think in some sense God should want what we want. God should should be like us. And Xenophanes was sort of saying with that quote, why do you think that's true? God God must be inconceivably different than than us, right? Uh, that he he can't possibly want the same things we want because he's so different from us. Um, that's as silly as saying God, you know, wants hay or something like that. What's interesting uh, is that I, I think I first confronted this uh, as, as a little kid. Um, we were on a camping trip when I was eight or nine years old, and my mom uh, read us uh, the C.S. Lewis book, The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe. Um, what's fascinating to me about that book is that uh, it's not really an allegory. It's a retelling of, uh, of the story of the New Testament in a different place and in a different uh, universe, I guess. Uh, if you've not read these stories, they're absolutely wonderful. Um, but what was interesting about those stories was the character of Aslan. Aslan is, is the lion. He's the Jesus character in The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe and in the Chronicles of Narnia. And, and there's a great quote in there. Mrs. Beaver uh, is telling the, the children when they first get to Narnia about uh, Aslan and and um, one of the children says, oh, he's a lion, is he safe? And Miss Beaver says, well, no, of course he's not safe, right? He's, he's, he's not safe at all. Uh, I remember that sort of sticking with me. But the thing that I think I learned most at age eight or nine, reading The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe, was that there was something really sort of different about, about God, right? That, that in fact, Xenophanes is wrong, that, that God, that God does want what I want in some sense, right? That, that because he loves me, he, he has this desire that he wants to know me and, and, and be in my life. And that, that seems so strange how something so powerful, so unsafe could sort of desire a relationship with me. And I remember that, that what first brought that home to me was that this lion in the Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe that was so powerful wanted to, to know these, these children and, and loved them. There's a scene, and I just want to read this um, just for a second. Um, the Aslan, if you know the story, is going off to be sacrificed. Uh, the witch has told him that, that he is the, she's owed a blood debt and he has to go and be sacrificed. And he hasn't told the children that this is what's going to happen, but they can tell something's wrong. And, and so they, the two uh, girls follow him. And when they get closer, Aslan says, oh children, oh children, why have you followed me? We couldn't sleep, said Lucy. Uh, and then felt sure that she needed to say no more and that Aslan knew all that they had been thinking. Please may we come with you wherever you're going, said Susan. Well, said, uh, said Aslan, and he seemed to be thinking, and then he said, I should be glad of the company tonight. Yes, you may come, if you promise to stop when I tell you, and after that, leave me to go along. Oh, thank you, thank you, we will, we will, said the two girls. And thereafter they went again, and one of the girls walked on each side of the lion. But how slowly he walked. His great royal head drooped and his nose nearly touched the grass. Presently he stumbled and gave a low moan. Oh, dear Aslan, what's wrong? Can't you tell us? Are you ill, dear Aslan, said Susan. No, said Aslan, I'm sad and lonely. Lay your hands on my mane so that I may feel you are there 
and let us walk like that. And so the girls did what they would never have dared to do without his permission. But what they had longed to do ever since they saw him, they buried their cold hands in his beautiful sea of fur and stroked it, and so doing walked with him. And presently they saw where they were going with him up a slope to the hill on which the stone table stood. And they went up to the side where the trees had come up the furthest. And when they got to the last tree, it was the one that still had bushes about it, Aslan stopped and said, O oh, children, children, here you must stop. Whatever happens, do not let yourselves be seen. Farewell. And both girls cried bitterly, though they hardly knew why and clung to the lion and kissed his mane and his nose and his paws and his great sad eyes. And then he turned from them and he walked out to the top of the hill and Lucy and Susan, touching the bushes, looked after him. And this is what they saw. I think, you know, eight or nine-year-old Eric got from that passage that Lewis wrote, got from that, that that was, you know, eight-year-old John 3.16. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believed in him shall not perish but have eternal life. For God did not send his Son into this world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. And that's what I've just been meditating on these last couple of days, is that, you know, that, that God loves me, that he sent his Son to be sacrificed for me. And that, in a way, I think I understood at eight or nine that I could walk with him in that walk, that, that he was willing to make that sacrifice for me, and I could bury my hands in his mane, and that he loved me, and he wanted my company. Be at peace. Hope to see you soon.